Hey there, welcome to another episode of Rambling Weekly. Yeah, uh, this week we're going to be talking about keeping the fear. And my uh, quantum love affair with the horror genre. <laughs> Let's get to it. Hi there, welcome back. Uh, that section there is from an album, and this is where all the music is going to come from today. And um, it's an album done by Sebastian Frege. Sebastian Frege? I apologize if I mess up that last name. And he made an album called Seven Songs for Seventh Saga. And the I had heard about this through OC Remix on Twitter, just kind of randomly. Somebody had said something, and then they retweeted it, and I was like, huh, checked it out. It's the Sebastian guy. He is playing three separate cellos, and then he puts it together. So he's like the smooth groove of cellos, and it's fantastic. I love, I love the music. It's very... Mm, it's very good working music too, so uh, you like I because I've never played Seventh Saga. I've seen it in a magazine one, <laughs> once, but never never got the chance to play it. But um, I, I I really like the music this guy made for it, and that song was Wind. So they all have names for them, and you can download the album for free on his website. I'll I will uh, put a put a memo to make sure to link that so Frege's sweet and then I'll be like what the heck is this and then I'll figure out I hope <laughs> uh, so yeah as my furnace thinks it's appropriate to kick on like right before I started recording this uh, this week has been a bit it was I was a bit busy I was busy bumblebee um and just kind of going through things. The weather here has been bizarre. Uh, like we we had a bit of a like a almost like a southern storm where it's neat, nice and clear skies, and then all of a sudden, boom! Instead of rain, it was like blizzard-like conditions, and the wind was ferocious. It was just it it did not want to it did not want to go away. It's like the last death gargles or the death rattles of winter. And like, I, we've gotten about not as much as some places, but, uh, this past week probably got about three, maybe upwards to like two and a half, three inches of snow, uh, which isn't really what it should be here. I mean, winter does this though. It's just, it was just really nice before, around Easter. Like a gorgeous day on Easter. And then it just dropped back into this. Surprisingly, a lot of people haven't been getting sick. I have not gotten sick, so that's uh, thankfully knock on wood there. Uh, but, yeah, it has been fun like that. Something that if people have been paying attention to when it comes to the videos I put out, sometimes you get blogs and stuff, uh, the last blog video that I did, that won't be the last one to see when this comes out, I think it was a blarg instead of a blog, just a blarg, uh, just mental blarging, um, and that was talking about getting a computer and for, for gaming and stuff like that, and I have had a change of heart. I thought about it, and it's just like, I do not really have the money to be doing that sort of thing, unfortunately, so I'm just going to have to just not do that. It's just, uh, yeah, I've got to hold off on doing fun stream stuff and whatnot. Uh, I... It's yeah, you know, you get into these crazy. Oh, I need to do this. I gotta do this. I want to do this. Blah 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 blah. That, that sort of thing, and then you get wrapped into it, and then I don't know. I had it all set up, and I was ready to, to fire, and pretty much had fired, but then I I stopped myself. 
sort of. No, I did stop myself. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I really, it is just, it is just too much money for me at this point in time with what very little money I have right now. Not, not a good move on my part to do something like that. So, yeah, that'll have to wait. I'll just have to somehow make do and finagle ways to make sure my laptop doesn't go full stupid on me when I try to record some Lufia stuff or something. I mean, that's that's what's kind of bugged me was that I was trying to record stuff for a Games Which Fan My Passion and with Lufia 2, but it just went into the, the stutter mode and it would just stutter or bugger up the recording and I got really upset about it and that's probably where it stemmed from is that just being really upset and then going fuck it I'll just get something else cause this is dumb 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 and so I you know started setting out to I'll just get new la a new computer and it's just nah I shouldn't be doing that cause I really don't have the money to jump around with that the whole thing, reason why I had to get a new laptop in the first place a couple years ago was because it the old one that I did have didn't it went into it went into stupid mode and I decided my fist was an appropriate way to fix it <laughs> which might come off as surprising that I would do something like that but I I, I had gotten really upset about it I was, it was just, I don't know, I, I get into those, those moods where I, if I get, like, upset about something, I won't ever hit anybody, because I, I just, I don't like touching people to begin with, so, hugging or anything like that, but, I mean, inanimate objects get the, the brunt of my, my fury, which is, every once uh, in a great while <laughs> but um, I I just uh, and, but thankfully this last time I, 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 I was able to calm it down calm it down and I just exerted that anger towards oh well I'll just buy something you know I'll buy a new one <laughs> and then I thought about it and then I was just like no no I'm not, I'm not gonna do it I just it's just, just too much money and I, I don't have that kind of money and you know maybe that's part of something that I see when um I see people just constantly buying games and stuff I probably get a bit harumph <laughs> for lack of a better word is uh I don't want to say disappointed or anything, but it it does make me a bit bitter that people just kind of go and just buy, 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 buy. Not because they have it, but just because that sort of thing really is, I don't know, I, I see it a bit wasteful. So, um, yeah, that is that is that. So, I'm going to pick another song here, and then we'll get into this topic. Welcome back. That was the second song on that Sebastian Frege album of Cello Deliciousness. And it is called Wind, or at least I hope it is because I don't have it. <laughs> it's the second song. Uh, and I am too lazy. My, my laptop is the, 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 uh, the desktop. Oh, that is a mess. <laughs> and I don't have it up right now. I'm a bit scattergrip brained. And the thing is, is that I'm actually re recording this segment because I recorded it yesterday and I was, I uh, did my, my blibbity blabbity bloop. And oh my goodness, I was all over the place. 
I didn't know what I was going for, and I didn't know what I was really saying. I was just kind of saying things. Words, 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 words. I like words, 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 words. La, 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 la. And it was, uh, yeah, so we're doing this again, because that was something special. Now, the topic for today, and yesterday, or the topic for this recording, <laughs> is uh, keeping the fear. And I guess it's me, because like, when I was re listening to what I had said, I just don't like the genre. There's a couple games that I like from the, the genre, and uh, movie-wise, I can't really think of much of anything. But uh, I'm not a big horror person. Like uh, I like Silent Hill 1 and 2. Um, I guess if you're going to include a Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 4. Um, uh, uh, like the... Fatal Frame series of the like Project Zero series, those are those are not so bad. I I don't know. I just it does not frighten me, and usually I just kind of get into thinking it's funny. Maybe that's just because I'm weird like that. But I don't know. As a kid, I always found things like books more frightening than movies or anything like that. Like uh, uh, with the the scary stories. I think there was one. One that frightened me for years. And maybe that's what it was. It was all of my terror went into this story. That uh, <laughs> everything else, it's like, ah, it's not that bad. But uh, the the thing that got me was, um, it was the, the scary stories, the third book. And one of them dealt with a scarecrow named Harold. And the scarecrow uh, kills somebody and is wearing its flesh at the end of the story. And I mean, th th those those drawings were already nightmare fuel as it was. But what added terror to this for me was that as a kid, I lived in a, a house where I was on the second floor. Um, on the first floor, it was divided. The first front of it was a barber shop, and the second or the back half was a single place for an old man named Harold. That's right. The Scarecrow and this dude shared the same name, and he was a crotchety old angry person uh, for one reason or another. Uh, maybe, maybe well, like, I don't really remember him being too, too angry towards me. Uh, I just always remember hearing it from like my mom and from a couple people of him just being a grouch. I never had a problem with him. I liked I I mean, I don't... It's not that I never had a problem with him, but he was always very very bristly and stuff so and I can I can kind of I can I can totally understand having to live with a, 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 a young exuberant little child on the second floor above him stomping around and being a, a little turd but yeah so like that frightened me for a long time I was I was really scared of that and um, not even just him per se but just that that story gave me like nightmares for the longest time and then all of a sudden they went away and then uh, yeah never had any problems really since uh, I don't know I the genre itself just doesn't doesn't do it for me like that story, the uh, the book World War Z, I like it. It's got some tense moments, but it's not like they're tense. It's not like oh my god, you're a spooky, spooky. Like I, I'm one of those goofy people that well, I'm probably not one. Just one. Of, there, there's there's a lot I imagine, but I'm one of those people that late at night, two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning, after I've put my pen down for writing, I will go onto the YouTube's. Or watch some like the the paranormal kind of things, or um, like the the freak out videos and everything. And I'll sit there and watch those for like an hour and a half <laughs> or so. And they don't bother me. They don't. I don't get scared from them. I'm not like you. Like um, like if I'm in the in the house by myself, it's not even a scare factor. It's more of um. Just the making sure meth heads don't break in or something. That's that's the big thing we gotta worry about here. I'm not worried about poltergeists or angry hand forearm demons coming coming to life, but just meth heads breaking in. Um, and maybe that's part of because I just it's not that I don't care 
oh, you know, oh, when you die, when you die sort of thing. It's just more of, um, uh, you know, if I die, I die kind of thing, I guess. That's that's about the best way I can put it. Um, but it's not like, oh, well, just fuck it. I'll just, just end something now. No, nothing like that. That's just... I, I'm just too stubborn to do, do something like that. But, um... Nah, it's, uh, maybe, maybe that's why horror doesn't really get to me. I don't know. Like, uh, game-wise... Silent Hill was a pretty good one as a kid. I remember I didn't get nightmares or anything from it, but it was like really tense. It, that I get maybe that's the problem is that uh, and it, there seems maybe maybe that's something I'm stumbling on right now and that I couldn't stumble upon yesterday was this idea that horror isn't really about scaring as much as it also is about tension and. I mean, if you're having spooky doo monster or, you know, the Chainsaw Massacre dude, for example, with this chainsaw, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know. Like, the last movie I saw that was a horror movie was uh, The Hills with Eyes, I think, or something like that. That was such a dumb movie. Those Jeeper Creeper movies, they're so dumb. Like, all of them. I don't find them scary at all, and maybe that's my problem, is that I'm trying to placate horror with scary, but uh, in the same hand with how a lot of movies are, uh, they, like it seems like Hollywood has a problem with writing tension. Um, they just want to kind of get the... And I kind of understand the audience is, uh, audience is a bit of a fickle beast. Where if you try to build something, they'll be like, well, this was slow and plotting. For example, I did not see the Star Wars movie, uh, the seventh one or whatever. I have no de desire to see that movie. I'm not a Star Wars fan. In the slightest. At all. Uh, I'll pass. I will bide my time doing something else. Personally, me, I am more of a Trekking person. I love the, the Star Trek preferably with Jean-Luc Picard, Next Generation, um, I didn't give a rat's ass for Abrams' Star Trek movies. I thought they were bad, bad, bad. At least the one I saw. I saw the first one, and I went, Ish, this is terrible. But, um, so maybe, you know, that sort of thing, coupled with it being Star Trek. Like, me personally, not, like as much as I love Star Trek and stuff, I'm actually a huge fan of the old um, Planet of the Ape movies. I love those movies. And... Call them cheesy all you want. Don't care. They are amazing to me. They they have a whole they hold a dear spot in my heart. So and also it's kind of cool to have, to have Charlton Heston's character from the first two movies. Yeah, he, he's Captain Taylor. So that's hey. <laughs> but um, the yeah. So the. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, yeah, with the Star Wars thing. Where was I going with that? Um, tension. That, that's what it was. With, with particularly, for example, with the Star that Star, new Star Wars movie. I did not see it, so spoilers if you haven't seen it yet, but still plan on seeing it. Uh, when you know, I think it's supposed to be released on DVD, Blu-ray, and all that stuff here soon, if, if it hasn't already. Maybe it just did. I don't know. I, I don't care. But... Um, so spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> but uh, they, re I, and I guess not really that much of a spoiler, but they reveal what that Kylo Ren character looks like. So you do not have any sort of tension building that way with just the 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 domineering presence of a villain, and usually a good way of making villains and and making really really good villains is to have them mirror the hero and instead of breaking good the the villain has broken bad and that's that's supposed to be that, that, for some people that's a really really good uh villain pff, trope motif whatever where because it, it it works out that way. Sometimes you can have truly psychotic characters be great villains, like Luca Blight or jo the uh, people like the Joker. I like the Joker because it's a bit of a it it's 
to me that same mirroring of of whole, Batman's whole thing. Like, but I'm not a big comic book guy, so just kind of looking at it. More so, if you're going to go comic villains, the only one I know even like an inkling really about that I think's kind of cool is Doctor Doom. <laughs> so, but the um. So they, they reveal what he looks like, and not only do they reveal what he looks like, he ends up losing in a in a physical, like, battle. And people say, well, you know, he had been blasted by something, and he had to fight other people, so he was a bit overwhelmed. But that, to me, breaks tension. Here, So you've already established that the dude can't handle... A wound, mind you, even if it is a big wound. A wound, but also taking on two other people with that. So you've already set a limit for what this person can do. And then... And then so you've already made this kind of imaginary barrier. And not only that, but you kind of... From what I have heard about it, you kind of have the, the good guy really stick it to him. Or in this case, the good gal. The main character. The protagonist. They kind of stick it to him. And... Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. It's just very bad tension. And I'm trying to think of a movie that had really good tension. And my my <laughs> that silence speaks for itself. I can't really think of, of at least recent movies and stuff that have been very good with tension. Usually it's a lot of, like, a lot of action. But I don't find action to be as as much of a te like uh, as much as tension building there. Like uh, think of mm, like the old well hell think of like the old spaghetti westerns or or the uh, uh, Kurosawa films. Those are tension building because it's it's slowly building up to these great moments of of I don't want to say interaction but. Maybe maybe struggle uh, yeah struggle interaction, like uh, for a few dollars more, that final draw scene with um, what is his name Van Cleef and the uh, El Indio the Indio, um, I can't think of the other guy's name. But the other guy does a really fantastic job of being a va bad guy. That is like as much as i love the good and the bad the ugly and that you know the ecstasy of gold do, 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 do. but <laughs> that's so bad but um as much as i love that one of the third film and the the three way duel that happens with that the second film of the three man with no name trilogy the second film for a few dollars more that final draw scene is intense and it's intense because not only do you have the the build up of it but you've also have a character the bad guy who throughout the whole movie whenever he's he's done something he's always been at an advantage and he's pushing it to him and he 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 uh has this advantage but he also uses something he uses a music box which is tied to Van Cleef's character and so you have this personal this personal insight into both men's kind of both men's positioning on the things and and words <laughs> not only that but you what you end up having is uh just look up the fight the, the it, or the duel it is well, but that, that it kind of takes away because you see the duel and you're like, oh, okay, what's so great about it? And you don't get the buildup of the the movie to it. But it is, it's such a fantastic bit of filming, and uh, the particularly the first movie uh, for a fistful, yeah, a fistful of dollars, is very much like Kurosawa's film. I think the Seven Samurai. I think that's what it is. I'm not a big Kurosawa film guy. Uh, I do love Stray Dog. Stray Dog's a fantastic film, but 
<laughs> that aside, uh, but it's tension, and th I think that's part of the reason why there's it's it's hard with horror for me to be invested in it because a lot of it's not tension, or it just comes off as comical, which is I guess a branch of of type of viewer likes to watch horror movies because they find them funny. Like I think the new the new <laughs> the new thing things like a decade old, but the the remake of Dawn of the Dead. I find that a funny movie. Why? Because at one point, zombie with no legs below its knees falls from the rafters onto the guys and gals trying to get to uh, a van of some sort. I, I swear that that's the case. I, I could be misremembering it, but I swear that that's the case. Um, yeah. <laughs> It, and it's just like, how did he get up there? I was laughing for, for like five, ten minutes. And my roommate's like, what is your problem? And I was like, D dude, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're back in tech DVD technology, rewind it. Took like an hour and a half. Of, well, not that long, of course. <laughs> to, to go back ten seconds, I had to spend half an hour on it. But the <laughs> it's just so silly. And I don't know, maybe maybe that's what it is. I'm, I'm not a big fan of being silly surprisingly i know that sounds probably kind of weird like i like to be silly i i just don't think <sighs> how do i want to phrase this <laughs> i don't you know like I, I like being silly and other people being silly is fine i guess i just don't find it as entertaining to me I like like it to entertain others, but I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me being weird, but I'm not a big silly person. Uh, unless it has to do with like just kind of making like, kids smile or something. Like, ah, you doing there? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this was supposed to be about fear, but I think maybe maybe the, I, I should have changed the title of it. But I think that's maybe okay. So before I dig this hole any deeper and go the same way that I did yesterday, let me put it this way: I find that when it comes to fear and horror in a genre, that for movies, books, and otherwise, that they just don't, they just don't do a very good job of holding tension or building tension. It's a lot of really quick snap, 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 snap. and that's where with like actiony bits in in horror things that's what i kind of feel like is that it's more of a like da, 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 like rapid fire kind of quick snaps of of tension and stuff and you know and it's me changing horror into being scary isn't really what it's meant to be i don't know oh uh, what are your guys thoughts on that because i know i've just kind of Poo -poo down the poopoo -poo hole, but um, yeah. What what are you guys' thoughts on the the genre of horror in general? Because I yeah, not not my cup of tea at all. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to find out, and maybe if you do have any sort of suggestions. Uh, one I didn't think of was the whole psychological thing, which kind of skirts the edges towards snuff film sort of stuff. That doesn't really get to me. I'm not really like it, it, it's not not my cup of tea. Um, I don't find it scary or anything. It's just kind of it's just distasteful. I guess is the best way I can put it. Um, but yeah, so that's that is that is mine. But if if yeah, if whatever you guys for horror films let me know or you know horror games or or books and that sort of thing let me know what what you guys like um and how you approach it if you do really like it if you have the same frame of mind of it well it's not so much about scary but i find it it can be kind of comical or not even about com being funny but rather um that you do like how they approach tension and that sort of thing so, yeah, we're going to take a break before I dig this deeper, and we'll go into the comments. So, yeah.
Ooh, you liking that? I like it. I hope you likes it too. That was the the uh <laughs> what one was that? That was the the third song, Star, in that that wonderful album there. Apologies, I'm a little mm, disjointed in the brain. Once again, I <laughs> I'm gonna read. I'm gonna, this is, of course, the comment section and whatnot. But uh, I've also got to get to recording most of the other stuff for the following episode because I'm trying to keep like a, a week ahead. Last week did not allow such such uh, things to happen, so I kind of got to catch up. <laughs> so we're gonna dig into these comments, and if I do miss some, I'll be recording them in the next for the the next episode because uh, there's a lot. And some of them are from it's a it's a mess. So I hope I get all of them. If I miss anybody's, let me know, and I will get back to them. Uh, either the following or the one right after it. So first up here, we've got a a response here from the second episode, and that is from Mr. Silver Mongoose videos, and he put hmm maybe stuff becomes a bit soured, but overall I enjoy the new memories as well. For example, enjoyed Monster Party as a kid, but beat it with a friend as an adult. I enjoy both sets of memories, but both sets will be nostalgic eventually. Just give it more time. Giant smiley face. <laughs> um, y yeah, like, I, I can see that, because this is uh, something that kind of... The topic, I believe, was profiting off of nostalgia. And uh, for me, it's... Um, I, I guess when I play something, like... <sighs> And maybe I said that during the the recording was also that I I have a hard time going back into games just in general. Um, there's very few. One of the few is uh, Xenogears as an RPG example. I I can play that game. Of course, I can't play it like back to back to back to back to back to back. But uh, I can play that game and then come back to it a couple years later and then play it again. Uh, that game I love. I loves me. Loves me some Xenogears. The other one is the the Blue Bomber Mega Man series. I cannot not play, <laughs> except for Mega Man Five. I'm not a big Mega Man Five fan, but uh, the ones on the NES plus the the later ones like nine and ten, I really enjoy playing those, and I can play those again without. <sighs> just without any sort of problem. I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm playing the Mega Mans. But, um, I, for, but for whatever reason, it doesn't, I, I never had, like, highly invested I emotional, uh, I get weight to the, the series. And that's not to say it's not a, a bad series or anything that like I always just, for me, that is the epitome of, of fun. So when it comes to a game, so I I guess I it's just one of those things I can just keep on playing. That and Fire and Ice, I like to kind of go back to Fire and Ice very not like often, but kind of like Xenogears. After a few years, I'll play it again and stuff. Um, but I have I, do, I have a really hard time going back through games. This is why. Sushi probably gets mad at me when we do the Power On Portable episodes because there's been a couple instances where I'm just like, I can't get through this. And it, part of it's because of playing a game before and it's just really hard. Like, even the Dragon Quest games. Like, the Dragon Quest games, I, I may love them, but I do have a really hard time getting through them sometimes. Um, the, the ones that I've beaten and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so part of it's uh, a f not wanting to take away from the nostalgia like uh, the original Final Fantasy will be one of those things that just kind of carries with me till till I either grow senile or die um, I that to me was like you play that making sure that thing's going <laughs> you uh, play it until it can be played no more sort of thing and then pff, and finally beating it after so many years so yeah but like i can kind of go back to it like i 
I, and I wonder if that, because I mentioned that to him in the comments, is that I wonder if because of having a friend there and the elements are a little bit different, if it helps segregate the thoughts of it. Because, like, uh, you know, playing the original Final Fantasy and going through it, I, I have those thoughts of it. But then playing the, like, PlayStation version of it with a friend and actually going through it to where no characters died... You know that that to me was a that was a grand old time, <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that is that. Thank you for the comment. And then he responded so spoopy, and I don't know if that was like a meant to be because I had made made mention of uh, how uh, um, Monster Party's title screen looks kind of creepy, <laughs> and he put so spoopy and i don't know if that was that was a typo or if that was just kind of tongue-in-cheek comment but spoopy indeed <laughs> all right and then for rambling weekly fifth have a few comments that we're going to go over and we are going to start from the bottom up so mr kid koala he responded, Robert E. Howard is the man. I recently just bought the Chronicles of Conan off Amazon, and I'm starting to make my way through it. Mega Man is the shit. Great gift for your little brother. I find myself going back to that video game series on a regular basis. Hopefully he has a great time playing through them. Uh, Taylor, I wish I could give you a different viewpoint, but I'm in the same boat as you. I don't. I just don't find those types... If, if I could read what he actually wrote, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to make up things. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I just don't find that type of games to catch my interest. I would rather, I would much rather be doing something else with my time. Uh, the Conan comment was into, uh, because I had just got the Cen Centenary Edition not too long ago. I still haven't touched it. I'm actually going through, and this will be the quote for the end of the day, um, <laughs> is uh, Ovid's Metamorphosis. 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 Um, I'm starting to read that. So I've tried reading the Wars of the Roses book by Dan Jones. Uh, I'm having a hard time getting into it. I don't know if it's just because it's the time period I'm not the biggest fan of or I'm not very smart in so I'm kind of like dead rule dead yeah oh this is terrible <laughs> but um ah, that was weird <laughs> but uh, yeah so um so that is cool that we're on the save wavelength as that and of course Mega Man is the shit and my brother he he played Two, and he did really well with two. Like in a day, he got to the, like the, the, not the second to last, but the third to last stage where you have the wall things that shoot the the shoot at you. You need all of the the uh, crush man's weapon to get to get through it, and it's kind of like a puzzle. He's gotten to there. That's you know for never really playing a Mega Man game before. That's pretty. That's pretty good. That's pretty, I mean, I I, I kind of helped him in the sense of telling him, um, some of the some of the weaknesses and stuff. But no, he can take Quick Man out with just the Buster. So you know he he does really good with it. I I kind of he but he just has issues with it. I said, oh, you should try Mega Man Three, which is probably not the best idea. But for some reason, like Mega Man Three to me is really easy. I don't know if it's just I go into, you know, Super Saiyan mode and just get it done, but I don't know. Uh, and he tried that and he was getting curb stomped. I may tell, tell, ooh, hey, squeaky chair. I may tell him to push to four and see if that might get him. Because four, four is, four is a pretty easy one outside of, um, the first Wily battle where you have to use Drill Man's weapon and blow it up before it hits, hits his, uh, hits his ship. That's, which is a pain, pain in the butt. But that's maybe the easier one to go with. <sighs> um, and that's all right if you have the same viewpoint. That's totally like I, I, I expect people to either have some, you know, 
have their own, I guess you should say, you know. Some people are gonna agree, some people are gonna disagree, some people are gonna be in the middle and stuff. It's all good. That's it's that is that is life. Y'all everybody's got y'all 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 got different professions. Can't even talk. I'm going to sip on some coffee because I can feel my throat is going a little dry. Mm -hmm. Ah, <clears throat> and that did not help at all. <laughs> Apologies, <laughs> but uh, oh, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. but um, no, like that, that's totally legit. I am not here to say that I know better than all of you, fa fa fa, or that your opinion's wrong because it's different. It's that's totally fine. Uh, that is what I would hope. The only thing I hope is just don't don't try to lord somebody's opinion. Or, or, I'm not, then I'm not pointing out you there, Kid Koala. I'm just saying in general for people, don't lord your opinion over others as if that's a definitive truth. I mean, that, that, that's just silly. Silly, silly, silly. Silly, silly, silly. Um, and then I did respond to him, and then he responded back with, uh, Okay, uh, he responded with two back-to-back -back real quick. Uh, one was, uh, yeah, I got the Centenary Edition, so he's going through that. Um, cool, cool, cool. And he got it because one of his friends had recommended it, and I, I should read this instead. Uh, yeah, I got the cent Centenary Edition. It just came in the mail a couple days ago. I'm slowly making my way through it, but I'm really enjoying what I, what I read so far. Uh, one of my friends recommended that I should pick up the horror stories of Robert E. Howard because I'm a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft's writing, and I really enjoyed that particular book quite a bit. There are so many good stories. I just knew I had to look up more of his stuff, and it seems like everybody recommends Conan the Barbarian, a.k.a. the Badass. <laughs> so I thought to myself, everyone can't be wrong, and I found myself ordering the book. The um, And so I... I um, in the comment that I first made to him, I also recommended if he, he likes that era of writing, because you're looking at the early 1900s. I, I, the early 1900s and the mid to late 1800s, worldwide, really, I like a lot of, a lot of the writing. It's, there's a distinctness to it, but also, um, a very... personal in in some ways with it but uh the war more boris was something i recommended to him and that is by er edison and it is a it is a bit of a harder read i guess because it's written in an older kind of style of english but it, it's somebody who's inspired by like norse myths and and that and like mythologies and stuff and wrote a story which eventually um, Tolkien would end up reading, and that, I think, pushed him, like, inspired him as a kid, but then, you know, everything with, uh, World War One kind of pushed him to, you know, inspired him to, to write out Mordor and all, how, how Mordor is and everything, but, you know, The War of Boris is a, a fantastic book, highly recommended it, recommend it, and so, uh, he put, uh, that he had never heard, never heard of it before, but I'll add that to my list of books to read. Uh, for a suggestion, I would recommend you read H.P. Lovecraft, but you probably already did that. But if you like crazy as hell stories that don't make a whole lot of sense and you love World War II, I would recommend The Wolf's Hour by Robert R. McCammon. Uh, it's a story about a British secret agent who goes behind German lines to stop a secret we weapon from being launched against their allies. Uh, the twist is that the agent is a werewolf. That is one hell of a twist. <laughs> Uh, the other, other comment that he had is, My favorite Mega Man is the original, which you don't hear very often. Uh, I just love how the game kicks... That uh, likes to kick your ass. That that it does. <laughs> but for some reason, you just don't... Uh, you don't want to stop playing. I like Mega Man 9 more than 10, and to be honest, I didn't really care a whole lot for 10. First off, you are a monster because you had said that. 10 is obviously better, and everybody who loves 9 is silly. Jokes aside, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, a lot of people really, really gravitate towards nine more than ten. I don't know if they, if because of, because of how well nine was received, they just kind of went through ten, so the motions are there. Personally, I liked it. I actually liked the music more from ten as a whole 
than Nine's music, right? Uh, particularly when it starts pushing towards, like Solar Man's stage. That 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 theme's phenomenal, but um, pu- like when it's pushing towards the end with the the Wily stages, uh, the battle theme of the first Wily battle, and just some of the other st- stuff, I find a lot more enjoyable than than nines but that's that's just me like the yeah the 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 um the robot masters are a bit goofy in 10 like <laughs> they're 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 uh, really scattered but i don't know i really enjoyed it nines were just really really short stages i think that's what kind of got to me um and he yeah the suggestion for hp lovecraft i've actually never read hp lovecraft which probably would surprise a few people that i know that uh know me as a, a reader but i remember a long time ago testing out um they have on a website kind of thing as cats are going crazy why are you cats so crazy but um i remember as a <laughs> This had to have been early college years or something. Um, there was a website where you could put in some of your writing and see what uh, what style of writing it mimicked most. I got H.P. Lovecraft, which is like, that's kind of weird because I don't really know what he writes like. I don't know if that's quite true. Um, somebody that I didn't know uh, who has read the story that I'm working on right now, Sudraba, they've made mention that, uh, my writing style is actually very similar to that of the short stories there in Lost Odyssey. Um, and not just in, uh, just in the, the style, but also the theme and, and what I kind of focus on a bit more. So yeah, take that as you will. (laughs) <laughs> uh yeah so thank you kid koala for the comments i appreciate them next up here we've got butterbirds and he puts uh when it comes to the sexiness in games i kind of like it to a certain extent i'm not a big fan on i'm not a big fan i'm not big on fan servicey stuff but then i like games like bayonetta which is just sexy I guess the whole game is purposely built around being sexy, and it's not afraid to admit it, uh, which is why I like it. That's the only game I can think of that has the sexy, because most others that I know about are fan service Yeah, like, fan service really... Uh, yeah, that is... <sighs> yeah, like... That's not to be, like, gratuitous or anything like that. You just kind of... Uh, like, uh, I... I kind of just went just uh, when um I seen it happen with uh, the first Trails of Cold Steel game, the San Kiseki, and that happened, and I'm just like oh, this is so so, so. <sighs> that, that was just I, I yeah that's part of why I don't like the those two games so far. Get the third one done so I can at least have a better opinion of the whole arc erg damn it falcon um bayonetta i've heard is a fun game it's not really something i'm interested in playing but that that is a good point to make on a a difference between being just fan servicey but then just being sexy and owning it and just being like whatever bitches i'm sexy i'm beautiful get over it (laughs) but um I, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. That's, uh, like, the fan service stuff always kind of feels like it's more of a way to try to pull in people. Which, I, I understand, but in the same hand, uh, you're, you know, going down the, that, that road of pushing towards, are you just trying to get more eyeballs to it, or are you actually trying to tell the story or something? or show an art style or something like that. That's what gets to me more so than anything. Those, that, that kind of polarity. So, yes. Thank you, Butterbirds. I appreciate the comment. Um, whoa. Oh, hold on, feline. You will, you will get your day in the sun. What? No, these aren't spam. Why is, why are they telling me it's spam? They, they're, te- YouTube. Fix your stuff. Okay. Um, 
So the last one comes here from BK McGlynn, uh, and he said, I didn't know you were also a Mega Man aficionado. I love the games, but rarely played them, because I suck at them. I mostly played the Game Boy games, which I don't think that you suck at them. I think those games are just very difficult. <laughs> Uh, I did have an NES back in the day, but I never owned many NES games because they were much more expensive over here in comparison with GB games. I did buy the Mega Man collection on PS4, and I have the intention of playing it, but I usually just return to games I'm good at, RPGs mostly. I'm mostly just a huge admirer of the music, especially the music from the 8-bit games. That, I think part of it's also that um, once you get used to, to it and you play it a bit regularly, a bit more regularly, you get either you can get really good at it or you can just never you just kind of plateau I I seem to be the former where I, I can get really good at it uh, for example 5 I never played 5 as a kid I, I just never had the chance or anything but I had got I downloaded it and I hate that game that game is not very good there's a couple cool, cool good songs but I'm not a big fan of that but, uh, and I played through it. Like, I blitzed through it real quick. This is what got my younger brother interested in wanting to play through the games, is that I, I blitzed through it. Oh, hey. And, uh, you know, I blitzed through one, two, three, four, five, and in, like, uh, two nights or something like that. At five, I was just getting my butt kicked all over the place. And I'm like, and I, I, I prefaced when I played through it, because three and... Three and four and two to a degree. Like, I'm not... I don't mind two, and I can get through it without too much problem, but I just don't like two very much. But uh, three and four, I'm like, he's on fire! You know, kind of thing. But, uh, and I prefaced it when I started playing. I'm like, okay, forewarning, I've never really played five, so this is going to be kind of ugly. <laughs> and it's uh, just that... Five. Uh, what are some of your favorite Mega Man tunes? Mine are Cut Man, especially the Game Boy version, Metal Man, Quick Man, Gemini Man, Man Spark Man, Snake Man, Pharaoh Man, Skull Man, Concrete, uh, Concrete Man, Plug Man, Hornet Man, Napalm Man, Final Slash, Last Boss, of Mega Man 6, which is that fucking song. That song is like. <sighs> Warning! You know, kind of thing. Nitro Man, Air Man from the Game Boy version, which is totally different from the NES version, and Pluto Man from uh, Game Boy Mega Man 5. Plus, I love Rush Jet 1's non-official Mega Man tracks like Orbit Man, Echo Man, Jungle Man, and Light's Ultimate Solution. Uh, I've never played Rush Jet 1 or anything like that. I will check those out. And I gave a big list, so if you want to see that list, I'll go back to rambling weekly five and look at the comment because it's i put a lot of music <laughs> to that. but uh oh yeah that game boy one i listened to that one that is like way different and uh pluto man i i remember once i listened to it again because i have Mega Man four and five on my 3ds and i played through them and that yeah that one's pretty pretty awesome <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I gave, I gave a list of like all the NES Mega Man games plus nine and 10 of the ones I, I liked. So check that one out. Cause, uh, yeah, excuse me. Cause yeah. Um, although most Americans I know are no prudes, I feel that if you look at America as a whole, it's a rather hypocritical country. Uh, I think we're all hypocrites to a degree. Um, it's, it just depends on what we're hypocritical about. Like... Um, I don't know, like, but I, I I totally get what you mean. Like it it's it's it is a bit of a duality where you have huge problems with violence, but we don't really try to uh, uh, approach a way to lessen it. But we have this hyper sexual thing and then yeah he goes yeah <laughs> I just should read this instead of trying to like act like I know things uh, if I put it real simple violence is uh, less of a problem than something like sex America has the biggest porn industry in the world I believe but having a second uh, party 
Oh, sorry, second. But having a half a second panty shot in a video game must immediately be removed because it would be disastrous for the kid, for the children to see. I could go on and on about this and about how guns are people's rights, quote unquote, in America, and is something that's much more acceptable than a little sexiness here or there. Yeah, like that. That is a that itself shows you the the, the dichotomy and the mind think of. America. You have the kind of the eastern portion, which is a lot more of, um, uh, in certain regards, it's it's you have the the puritanical part where they where they they settled and all that, and then they pushed east or east west through Pennsylvania and all that sort of stuff, and you get the Mormons and everything. That yeah, I mean that's that's part of being a melting pot, though. So. I think that's that's why it's hard to really look at the country and say that it's hypocritical in that regard because it's not it's not all of one people. It is a it should be a um an I like the the playground of ideas so that the best ideas outperform uh, you know the crappier ideas and here we've got this eternal struggle of oh my goodness it's a boob I'm going to go, this, this is defiling the dick, you know, that sort of silliness, and then people who are just like, oh my god, porn, you know, just, just porn, etc. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, <laughs> but that, that, yeah, good point. I know us Europeans are rather open-minded slash liberal, and I believe a large part of America is as well like yourself but as a whole i feel america treats sex very unnaturally just release those damn dead or alive extreme games with all the those boobies who cares all women have boobs that's how it is get over it <laughs> right right yeah it's 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 really it's really like they they wanted first it was all about violence and how uh when a game is violence it'll promote violence and make people violent no it's 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 not quite that yeah um, now it's it's this the whole sexual thing so when it's sexy they'll see or you know when they have but it only like seems to attribute to women when you see that it's a woman or you know that or like a, a game character i shouldn't even say woman because it's just bits of data but it's if it's bits of data that looks like a woman dressed scantily then immediately what's going to, it's going to turn all men into horn dogs and they are going to look at women as nothing but sex objects. That's a that's a really large cliff to leap from, because <laughs> I don't think there's anything on the other side. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I just can't. I oh, I can't say I seek out games or an or anime or whatever that are essentially or essentially especially sexy or have oodles of fan service but i feel every person should be allowed to play slash watch them if that's their thing companies slash governments don't have a say in this in my opinion yeah that's yeah i mean that's it, you get into some of those very questionable things but then you get into which is um a more correct stance on things. If I recall in, in certain European countries, probably in a lot of European countries, the age of consent is varying and it doesn't match up with, uh, the U S S age of consent, which I think 18. I, I have no interest in 18 year olds. So, or below because they're a bunch of silly people. Um, you know, I have, I have siblings who are like still 12 or 13 and I, I, I talk with them and I'm like, how are you going to function as an adult? <laughs> so that's so like, I just, there's just, uh, to me, that's you're okay, no, thank you. Give, give me a woman who is a, a very confident, self-assured woman and I will have good times and conversations with them um but so like yeah it, that, i think that kind of gets into it he did have another comment but um i didn't see this i don't know why i didn't see this but um and he's like never heard of him which is the rush jet one person and he's like damn tad nuznov slash rush jet one is probably the best chip musician i know of even better than vert from shovel knight look at the description for the timeline for each track 
I will do so. I will check many of your faves, especially the GB games. I'm mainly familiar, uh, mainly familiar with Mega Man 1, 3, and 4. The GB games have many great tracks that weren't featured in the NES games. While they did include many of the same NES stage themes, this is a great exclusive uh, Game Boy track. I'll check that out. Mega Man 2 and 5 have completely different soundtracks on the Game Boy 2 is, on the GB is widely hated, but since it was my first Mega Man game, I love it the most. People mainly don't like it because of very high screechy notes. But that is how I know it, and I don't want to have it any other way. Check my channel uploads for a couple of Mega Man Game Boy tracks, including the very best one, Airman on Game Boy. I will do that. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you, BK McGlynn. And now that I have totally gone for <laughs> another half an hour on this. <laughs> Woo! Okay, I'm going to <clears throat> lose my voice, but I'm going to play this track and then come back with a quote, and then we're going to wrap this up. Okay, I feel a bit better. Uh, welcome back. That was Sky. So, you're... Yeah. Alright, this one's going to be a bit quick, because I need to start getting on the other recording and all that lovable, huggable stuff. And for this one, we're going to go with the Metamorphosis of Ovid, and I I just started reading it, but um, like I actually read through the, like the introduction and all that kind of stuff. Uh, by like different authors and just kind of explaining things and whatnot. However, right at the beginning of the, the book, there is a page worth of uh, different quotes throughout the book. And I've seen this one and I really like this one. It is from Book 7, page 122 of the Barnes and Noble Classics version. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, so here we go. I honestly don't know the context of it, but we'll, we'll get to that. So here it is. Ah, if I could. I should be more myself, but some strange power holds me down against my will. Desire persuades me one way, reason another. I see the better and approve it, but I follow the worse. And that's just, uh, I think that just shows the, uh, the folly of mad, because we're not, if, if we were strictly logical creatures, uh, we would be very boring creatures. We would be like the robots, just not perfect. We are... We... And this is, you know, you're getting to the... So, like, I don't know exactly what in the context that is referring to, but, um... I don't know. It, it's something I think we all struggle with. We all struggle with wanting to just do what we want to do instead of doing what we need to do. And that, like... Yeah, and sometimes sometimes those things line up, and a lot of times they don't. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess if uh, if if you are struggling for that sort of thing, just uh, try to you know try to force your way through, and um, just just push push through the the barrier of of hedonism and desire and all that sort of thing <laughs> to get stuff done. So. That's that is it for this episode, and we're gonna play out to the one of the the, the, the next track here, which is uh, Moon. But uh, like I said, I, I'll leave links for it below. But oh, totally check that guy's album out. It's free to download, and I um, even if it's free to download, but if you do have some money to like pass his way, if you really like it, pass pass some money his way, cause it's very very good, very very good music, and that's all. I think outside of one song. They're all three minutes or less, so you're you're not looking at like here is because some so, some song like I there's some music that I like that's really long. Empire of the Clouds by Iron Maiden that's 18 minutes long. I love it. Yeah, uh, this song the, these songs here by Frage they're three minutes or less and long, and I enjoy them. 
and love them too. So, yes, that is it. If you uh, want to comment on the YouTube video, go ahead. I tried to set up an email and I completely buggered it. I'm going to do that again sometime this week. So with the, uh, it should be in the description below. If you want to email and be like, hey, um, that that if you want to con like just kind of contact me through uh, either YouTube or on Twitter at Munogaru five five three. M U A wow I can't even spell M U R A M U R A G A R U five five three, Phew. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for listening, guys. Enjoy your weekend, and yeah, let's do this. <laughs>